Hi, and thank you, and welcome back from the break. My name is Karen Miga. I'm a postdoc from UC Santa Cruz. And I'm going to talk today about the linear assembly of the human Y centromere, and I'm going to be using long nanopore read sequences to do this. Now, as we've already heard from a number of talks this morning, the human genome is incomplete. And when I say incomplete, it has these large multi-megabase gaps that exist at every pericentromeric and centromeric region in the human genome. Now, one can think before you begin to engineer a genome, you must complete it. So this is part of the, um, the prequel, if you will, to the, to the HTP, right? And so one, many of us understand why these gaps exist, but I really want to emphasize sorry, that really when you zone in and you begin to look at the sequence structure at each one of these gapped regions, you find that these sites are very repeat dense. And it's not just any repeats. These are known as satellite repeats or satellite DNA, which are tandemly repeated DNAs, which are found in a head-to-tail orientation for millions of bases. And it's really the abundance of these sequences and also their sequence identity to one another within the array, which make this an incredible challenge for sequence assembly. <laughs> but I think it's really important that as a gen genomics community, we face this challenge and that putting together a satellite array would be a, an important genomic milestone because we'd get us one step closer and it's actually a big step forward to that statement we've made earlier this morning to the telomere to telomere assembly for the human genome or a haplotype phase. And closing the centromere gap really signals that technology has finally reached a stage where we can complete the human genome, where it's finally possible. So in saying that today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to discuss with you how I put one human centromere together. This is the human centromeric region for chromosome Y. There's a lot of advantages for why we would start on this particular chromosome. One is this is a haploid chromosome. It's also the smallest satellite array of all the centromeric regions. And I know of a well-characterized 5.8 KB repeat that exists in head-to-tail orientation. The strategy that I'll be talking about today is a back-based strategy. This is another advantage of this particular centromeric region. David Page's group and this Tilford et al. made a physical map of the Y chromosome, of which I have a library of backs that I know span this particular centromeric region. And unlike what they could do back in 2001 with short read sequences, we're finally at a stage where we can apply what I would say long reads, and in this case, I'm not talking about tens of KBs, I'm talking about hundreds of kilobases in a single read length to begin to resolve these regions, not only in the backs, but also by creating this inferred or sequence array by tiling um, backs across in a way that can give us information about the satellite array itself. What I'll be talking about is a protocol we've developed at UC Santa Cruz. We call it the Longboard 1D protocol. Essentially, you have a high molecular weight circular DNA. Here it can be 100 to 300 kilobases in length. You can add a transposon. We've optimized our conditions where you're cutting this particular back once or you're nicking it. Essentially, you're creating a linear high molecular weight structure. We can then ligate these proprietary sequence adapters on and then go through min ion sequencing. The nice thing about this is when we actually get our sequence reads, we can begin to predict the actual length of the back because we're getting that full length back out. What we put in is what we get out. So for example, for this particular back, we're looking at a, a sequence length that's 198.6 kilobases. And not only that, I want you to take away from the slide that we have about 200x coverage of this particular full length back. We can do this across all the backs in the particular library of interest. And so in total, we've generated over 3,500 reads that are greater than 150 kilobases in length. So the single molecule read that we're getting is insufficient quality in order to use it by itself. So what we've developed is a multiple alignment strategy to improve quality by consensus. In other words, if you have this high molecular weight circular back, you can linearize what I'm showing you here. You can sample reads, for example, sample 60, go through a multiple alignment strategy, and then we have a polishing step to end with a final high quality consensus sequence. What I'm showing you here is a single back, for example, where we have 221 kilobases of sequence. The vector is shown here, and the insert is in gray. For in particular, we have 38 of these sin Y repeats, or the 5.8 kilobase repeat that I discussed earlier in my talk. And when we compare it to the published consensus, we're looking at greater than 99% identity. This is a particular AT rich, so I'm nodding all the homopolymers of A and T in this particular vector. And importantly, what we're able to do is go through and actually find all the, vari all the variants that could be informative for mapping through the centromere. For example, we have two tandem structural rearrangements here. 
And also, uh, we predicted 634 predicted nucleotide variants. Now, I assume at this stage that we do have some false positives, so the next thing was to go through a series of steps to ensure polishing. And so all backs are resequenced to 600x coverage using Illumina. Here's a reference back relative to a 5 mer frequency. This is one test that we did to look for biases. Here I'm showing for the Illumina coverage, we see a really nice correspondence. However, when we look at our Albacore reads, Albacore is just the software used to do base calling for Oxford nanopore. Um, we find that we do find certain outliers that might suggest that there's certain biases in our sequence calls, they're AQ rich. And I can use this information to go through and informatically begin to correct and modify sequences and eliminate those false cause of base calls. And doing so, I can now identify single copy variants using the Illumina data. And we can identify all the informative single copy sites that are useful in this overlap back strategy. In doing so, what I'm showing you here is the overlap map of these particular backs. The, gray, the purple zones are showing structural rearrangements, which is a previously characterized 6KB repeat that we also are seeing in this particular back. Um, by taking the overlap positions, we're able to generate a 460, I'm sorry, 346 KB array. We expect that this particular array is actually biologically relevant. We know that the back library that was generated is from a Western European individual. And also, using the Y haplogroup data, we know it's from an R1B individual. So when we go through 1,000 genome data and we estimate the size of this particular array, we find that Western Europeans typically have a range of the array, array which is between 300 and 400 KB. And also, when we do the Y haplogroup matched individuals for 139 individuals, we find a median range about 350 kilobases within a range of 220 and 460 KB. And so where are we going next? We're optimizing the long board strategy now, version 2.0, to increase these long read sequences from libraries we've generated from whole genome data sets. So we're moving towards the entire genome. You can consider this a pilot project. Um, we're improving methods to not only ensure the quality of our base calls that I've shown you with the Illumina data sets, but also the informatics so we can begin to mine some of the signal data to ensure that we have these overlap positions ironed out. And in the meantime, we've constructed initial maps that detail the chromosome assigned satellite sequence and content and structure for the entire human genome. So now we have some assessment. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and do my acknowledgement slide. I mentioned I'm a postdoc with David Hausler, so I want to give him credit from the UCSC Genomics Institute. I've also been working with Jim Kent, Benedict Patton, and Sophie Salama as well. I've been there. I'm very pleased to be part of the UCSC Nanopore Analysis Group. We have a tremendous amount of exciting research come out, so please look us up. Um, Mark Akison, Natane Jane, and Hugh Olson have been um, incredibly um, powerful in this particular analysis that I've been working with today and optimizing the strategy of getting these old, old super long reads. Um, as far as Oxford Nanopore goes, Dan Turner and David Studdard has been helpful in getting us the actual transposon baits optimized for our assay. And when it comes to the, the Y back resources, this is really all stemming from work that I did in Hunt Willard's lab as a young graduate student and with David Page at the Broad. And with that, I'll take any questions. Quite diverged. So, so can you uh, different from uh, other alphoid satellite DNA from different chromosome? Mm -hmm. Can you uh, uh, verify your uh, uh, so variants in uh, genomic DNA, in uh, uh, in uh, DNA seq data, in Illumina uh, the data? Your and second question. So, why you would like to uh, so continue work by isolation of alphoid DNA? Uh, so block from total human DNA. Why not use monochromosomal hybrid cell line? Right. <laughs> Thank you. No, those are both really fantastic questions. Essentially, before starting this project, I was mining seq data. So that's um, a lot of the reference models that are currently part in HD38. That was my reference work. So I've already mined every human centromeric array and presented variants for at least one individual. And since that time, I have 16 other individuals using a mixture of PAX bio and unlimited data. And I'm happy to talk at length about that after this talk. This was more of a close vignette. The reason for using the Y backs versus doing more of this isolation from a um, a hybrid, for example, somatic cell hybrid panel, is that one would have to go through and actually do the cloning again. And this was kind of a proof of principle that we could utilize these backs um, that were existing and already characterized by the page labs to go through and do this physical um, um, assembly. I would suggest that 
in the future and why my future aims say I'm going to go into genomic DNA is that BACs may not be the best way to apply to every human centromeric region. The libraries were processed, for example, in a way that you can't guarantee that all of the sequences would be cloned efficiently across every human centromere. We're lucky that we have such a nice assembly for the Y, but that can't be guaranteed across. So I'm trying to move it to a direction where you can just do genomic DNA. And, all right, thank you.